What is letting go all about? Well, you can take it up as a mental practice, thinking about what you might be holding on to and then trying to let it go. You might also approach it by feeling into what it is here that's not holding on, that's never holding on. So what is it that doesn't have to let go? It's right here. It's always here. It's not something that you can define with a thought or a concept. It's not something you can describe in words. But it is here. It's something that's not necessarily a thing or an object. It's not something that any description can enclose. It's not subject to descriptions. It's not subject to a mental construct at all. Whatever you imagine in your mind, it's not that. Whatever you imagine in your mind is far too small, too limited. It's a perspective. It's a view or a frame of reference at best. It can also be a concept. It can be a narrative, some words, self-talk. All of that is not what I'm pointing to. All of that is an effort to hold on to a perspective or a view or a frame of reference. That's just mental activity. But what's here regardless of that mental activity? What's here before, during, and after any thought, any perception, any belief? What's here whether there is activity or rest? Whether you're busy or not busy? Whether there's an emotion or whether there's not an emotion? Whether there are thoughts, whether there are no thoughts. There's something that is not contingent upon any of those conditions. There's something that's not contingent upon any condition at all. It's not subject to conditions. So we could say unconditioned, but that sounds like a thing or a paradigm or a view. The mind goes, ah, finally, something I can grab onto. But your view of that, or anyone's view of that, the mind's explanation of what that means is not what I'm pointing to. No matter how clever the mind is, no matter how good it is at defining things in concise and precise ways, that's not what I'm pointing to. Those are mental activities, thoughts, movements of mind. What's more primary than that, more immediate to your experience right now? What is never holding anything, never holding on, never holding a view, has no perspective, has no limitation, has no boundary. And yet it's radically intimate. Because it has no boundary, it's not over there. It's not away from. There's no isolation. There's no one apart from it. There's no one that needs to find it or anything at all. Those are all concepts, all iterations of mind and thought. But what I'm pointing to is just this as it is. Not in any particular way, not in any particular state or form. No specific set of conditions because conditions change all the time. There is something that in this way is changeless, but it's always not only available, it's permeating all experience and non-experience. It's permeating the light and the dark it's permeating the sense of being a doer, and it's permeating where no doership is ever sensed. It permeates all human realms, and it permeates all non-human realms. And it easily traverses where no realm even exists. So to let go is to let go of all formations of mind, all thoughts about how this could be, how this should be, how this is, who I am, where I'm going, where I came from. Those are thoughts. We can let go of those naturally when we see what it is that never holds on, never forms a view, never believes it's a separate individual or separate self. It's in the sensations right now in your body. It's in the sounds. It's the visual experience you're having without being the one having it. It's just that right in front of your face, inside, outside, above, below, 
and in no dimension at all. None of those are separate from one another. Dimension and non-dimension are not two. So this is full interpenetration, full immersion, but immersion stops making sense because there's nothing to immerse into anything else. And when all of that is seen clearly, there's nothing to contemplate anymore, nothing to think about. There's no need to emphasize rest or movement. There's no need to emphasize silence versus sound. There's no need to emphasize form versus emptiness. There's no need to emphasize emptiness over form. One is all and all is one and one and all are none. Can you feel the radical flexibility of this all? It's in your bones, it's in your marrow. It's in the blood coursing through your veins. It's in the sounds. It's in the tensions. It's in the relaxations. The thoughts, the doubts, the beliefs, the awakenings, the contractions. All of this is perfectly okay, just as it is, because nothing holds. Nothing holds on. Nothing is ever formed. 